Good morning. Welcome to Church. My name is Hayden. Great to connect with you today. Whether you're using the interactive service with prayers that you can say at home, or whether you're using the one-click simple service with everything all included, it's great to be with you. A couple of things I wanted to mention to you before we started. One of those was, I trust that you got my letter through the week involving a survey. We want to hear from you so that we can be articulating our values and our vision, that is what matters to us and what we are praying for and working towards. So that will help us to navigate the next season, but also the times to come. And I also want to let you know that this week I'll be writing to you again about our end of financial year appeal, the education and building appeal. Um, read through that letter carefully. Please be prayerful in how you give and all gifts are eligible for tax deductibility. Campbell Mackay um, has a great message for us today from God's word about the sower, the parable of the sower, a story of a farmer that has really important implications for us about how we hear God's word, but not just hear it, obey it. I'm going to pray and then we're going to kick on. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we thank you that we can connect in this way. We ask for your blessing upon our time as we gather in different places through different formats. And Father, we ask that as we hear your word by your Holy Spirit, you'd help us to trust you, that all of us, younger and older, those who are newer Christians, those who have been following you for a long time, would be people who hear your word and obey it. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here's what's next. Hear the word of the Lord. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that encouraged and supported by your holy word, we may embrace and always hold fast the joyful hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Laurel. And uh, we've got three kids, Isaac, Amelia and Evie. Here they are, uh, cooking with their mum in a moment of uh, relative peace. Yes, uh, so the stresses of this time period have just really been for us swapping the stress of moving around to lots of different activities to staying at home and being in each other's faces in a way. And that's meant that extra fights, um, extra loudness. We all have earmuffs that we can grab if there's really that, that times of tension. That includes adults. We've got them too. <laughs> uh, and there's definitely been the extra stresses of technology and things not working and just frustrations at that. Yeah, and so I think that shows up in terms of that loudness but also maybe extra impatience with one another, not being as generous to one another as we'd like to be uh, and as God would have us be. Um, but also knowing that this is just a really challenging time. A gospel truth at this time that has really resonated with me has been the need for forgiveness, forgiveness uh, from God, especially as I know each night when I reflect on the day that has happened and I think, golly, I lost it again. Uh, knowing that he forgives and he enables us to move forward and there's a new start to every day. Even with the kids, they're so willing to forgive and change their attitude and they're really loving and that's a great demonstration to me that I'm loved and forgiven. Mm. For me, it's been God's patience. Uh, he's so patient with us and so that's a reminder, an example and also a motivation to be patient uh, with one another and, and others who we come in contact with in this time when things just take longer, uh, clunky, um, we're not as kind to one another as we'd like to be. Yeah. So that's us. Uh, we're up in Newcastle serving God at Newcastle University, so we're ministry partners of Emmanuel Church and uh, were there in person a number of years ago um, regularly. Uh, and we're, yeah, it's nice to be able to join you in this way. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Jesus said that if I thirst, 
I should come to Him. No one else can satisfy. I should come to Him. Jesus said, If I am weak, I should come to Him. No one else can be my strength. I should come to Him. For the Lord is good and faithful. He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said that if I fear, I should come to Him. No one else can be my shield, I should come to Him. For the Lord is good and faithful, He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Said if I am lost, he will come to me, and he showed me on that cross, he will come to me. For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. For the Lord is good and faithful, He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus. Jesus strong and kind, Jesus strong and kind. Heavenly Father, thank you that in the person of Jesus, You have revealed to us the knowledge of the secrets of your kingdom. Lord, help us by your Holy Spirit to receive the message like good soil, to listen to your word and obey. Protect us from the enemy who would snatch the word away. Strengthen us for those times when our faith is tested. Guard us from all distractions that would stifle our growth. Fill us with confidence in the power of the gospel and with the sure knowledge that your word does not return to you empty. May your word produce in us a fruitful crop that multiplies as we share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'd like to add your own prayers, please pause the video on the next two slides and pray about the matters there. Today's Bible reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. After this, Jesus travelled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. 
While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that, though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we're looking at the parable of the sower. Jesus has been travelling about from one town and village to another. He's been proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God and the disciples, the twelve, are with him. A large crowd gathers and Jesus tells this story, a parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see though hearing they may not understand. You might have heard it said that parables are simple stories to help us understand what Jesus is saying, um, that they function maybe a little bit like this drawing that I've maybe copied from someone else uh, as an aid to help us get the point. You might have heard it said that parables are helpful for children they make it easier to grasp the truths he's communicating. But I think Jesus sees them differently. Have a look with me at Luke chapter 8, verse 10. Jesus said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. You see, parables are dual purpose. There are these great crowds hearing Jesus tell the parable. But when it comes to the explanation, who's there? Well, it's the disciples. 
The disciples are the ones who ask the meaning and hear the meaning. And that's how parables operate. For some, they explain. For others, they mystify. For disciples, for followers, they clarify. And for others, they confuse. Jesus explains the parable to make his point. There are some people, Jesus says, who hear the word of God, but don't respond. The seed is snatched. The devil, Satan, comes and takes God's word from their hearts. And so they don't believe. They're not saved. It's a bit like the people who heard Jesus teach in the synagogue back in Luke chapter 4. You might remember uh, Jesus stood up in the synagogue and he quoted from scripture from the Old Testament. He said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And the people were amazed at his words. But then as Jesus continues to speak, they become enraged. They're furious. And they take Jesus out of the town to throw him off a cliff. The seed is snatched. God's word is taken from their hearts before they can believe. Which I think for us is a bit of a reality check. A reality check because it's clear that not all will believe. If it's possible for even Jesus' words to be rejected, then we should expect that sometimes as we take God's word out, as we share God's word, we will be rejected. And what's actually happening? Well, when that happens, it's the seed snatched. God's word is taken before they believe. Well, there's a second kind of seed in verse 13. Have a look at it with me. Luke chapter 8, verse 13. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. Troubles come. We know that. Times of trouble. Times that test our trust. It's the sort of thing that the disciples were faced with in the storm. We heard the story last week and it comes up later in Luke chapter 8. You remember the story as Jesus and his disciples got in the boat and they set out across the lake of Galilee and Jesus fell asleep in the stern of the boat. A great storm came up on the lake and it was so severe that the boat was being swamped and these grown men, some of them seasoned fishermen who lived and worked on the lake, were in fear for their lives. Master, we're going to drown, they said. And Jesus, at a word, calmed the storm. He asked his disciples, where is your faith? Because times of trouble test our faith. When the storms of life come, our trust is tested. Our faith is tested. We know that troubles will come. You may be going through the hardest time of your life right now. Health problems that seem to have no end. Physical illness or mental health problems. And they test your patience. And they test your trust in God's goodness. You may have lost a loved one and you're left wondering, where is God in this? You may be going through a relationship breakdown or someone has let you down badly. The disciples learned that even in the storm, even when times of trouble come, we can trust Jesus. And in the parable of the sower, Jesus warns that in times of testing, some will fall away. 
some who received the word with joy will come to no longer believe. There's a third kind of seed, and that is the seed that falls among thorns. Verse 14. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches and pleasures, and they do not mature. I'm conscious of how, in this unusual season, how differently we've been impacted by what's going on. You might have found the social restrictions a relief. Uh, no more expectations of endless rounds of social gatherings and children's sport and music lessons and play dates, although that relief might have been tempered a little by homeschooling. Or you might have found the social restrictions terribly lonely. Your usual routine of catch-ups and activities has been disrupted and they've left a gaping hole. You might have found your work has been impacted. There's been a downturn in business. Perhaps you've been stood down temporarily and you're having trouble filling the hours. Or your work might have become even busier and I know many of our teachers will relate to this. Uh, our teachers who've been, until the last few days, trying to facilitate online learning and planning for a return to school. We've all been impacted differently, but we've all been impacted. And one of the opportunities we have is to take stock. Things are different to how they were what will the new normal look like? I must admit to feeling a little relieved as the pace of life slowed down a bit. And I'm left wondering how much to let things return to normal as everything starts up again. Because there's always a danger that the good things will choke out the best thing. Here in Australia, in Sydney, in the hills, we live in a privileged position of abundance. There are so many opportunities, endless things to enjoy. Even in the middle of lockdown, we could enjoy lovely uh, walks in the sun. And with our position of abundance also come worries. And I think our greatest danger is simply this, the word choked. The American writer Kevin DeYoung uh, has some really helpful thoughts on this. Let me read them to you. Jesus knows what he's talking about. As much as we must pray against the devil and pray for the persecuted church, in Jesus' thinking, the greater threat to the gospel is sheer exhaustion. Busyness kills more Christians than bullets. How many sermons are stripped of their power by lavish dinner preparations and professional football? How many moments of pain are wasted because we never sat still enough to learn from them? How many times of private and family worship have been crowded out by soccer and school projects? We need to guard our hearts. The seed of God's word won't grow to fruitfulness without pruning for rest, quiet and calm. I find those words convicting. There are so many good things on offer, so much useful busyness, but if it leads to the word choked, it's not worth it. There's a fourth seed. Verse 15, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. The implication is clear. Be the fourth seed. Be the good soil. The right response to the word of God is not to hear and forget, or to hear and let the word be choked, but to hear the word and keep it 
and persevere and produce a crop. The point is fruitfulness. When we let God's word work in our hearts, it produces a crop of righteousness, good work, that abounds to God's glory. A little bit further down in verse 18, Jesus underlines the point again. He says, therefore, consider carefully how you listen. And then in verse 21, he says that our response to God's word is what brings us into God's family. He says, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. How's your hearing going? Are you hearing Jesus? Here's the key question for us, I think. What would need to change for you to be hearing the word, holding on to it, and by persevering, produce a crop? What would need to change for you to be hearing God's word and putting it into practice? I, uh, I love the change of seasons, and one of the reasons uh, is because of seasonal fruit. Coming into summer, uh, you've got the anticipation of that first juicy peach or the first tray of mangoes. Or in the cooler months, uh, the first really good mandarin. The imagery of the parable of the sower is probably about a crop of grain rather than mandarins. But the joy of the crop is the same. We want to be fruitful. We want to take joy in producing a crop of righteousness, right living, obedience to God. So let's be people who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Let me pray for us. Loving Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for your word sown in our lives. We pray that we would be fruitful, that we would joyfully produce a crop of righteousness, that you would help us to be people who hear the word and retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. In Jesus' name we pray. Hope you had a great morning this morning. I'll let you get to whatever's next. I'll see you in the What's on an Emmanuel in 60 seconds or less on Tuesday and in the e-news. Have a great week. God bless you. See you soon. Bye-bye.